Episode number two. Go, Mommy! Hello, sisters! Welcome to Women with Balls in the Air. Join me as I uncover the modern-day secret to success. I'll share with you strategy, tips, and bonus interviews from today's most influential matriarchs. Career moms, it's time to take back your life and get into the game of gumption. And here is where we're going to do it. Let's go, girls. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your hectic schedule to listen to this podcast and hang out with me. I hope you enjoy this episode. This is part two in a three-part series. So if you have the time to go and listen to the first one, go check it out. It'll make this episode even that much more valuable to you. So the goal is to understand the quiet giant authenticity and how being authentic can get you further in life and career and much, much faster. We will continue with the story of my experience shadowing Marty Scorsese on the set of the departed feature film. I will then dissect the story to give you compassionate advice and actionable tips on how we can retrain ourselves to be authentic. The last episode, we talked about how to jump out of your comfort zone. In this episode, we will reveal the importance of being authentic. And then in the next episode, the last of the three-part series, I'll share with you what I learned from speaking with Matt Damon and Martin Sheen. Okay, now that our ears are open, let's get started. For in-depth information and links to today's podcast, please visit our show notes page that accompanies this episode at kcdstefano.com slash marty2. I jumped out of my comfort zone and into a plane headed for the streets of Brooklyn, New York to shadow Martin Scorsese. His gracious producer, Joe Reedy, scheduled me in to shadow Marty for four days on set in a warehouse in Brooklyn. Wow, the deal was done. I was so excited to observe my idol. I couldn't wait to see him nurture his talent, to see him work out his shot lists, to watch him communicate with his DP. I couldn't wait to learn all these lessons on filmmaking from the very, very best. Little did I know, the most poignant lessons that Marty would teach me had nothing to do with filmmaking. I ended up learning more about business and life itself. I arrived on set at 6 a.m. and I browsed the call sheet. The call sheet is this piece of paper that's issued to everyone in the cast and crew that tells them the schedule and what's shooting. But this wasn't just any call sheet. This one was garnished with the names of a few industry all-stars. Not sure if you've ever heard of these guys. Um, Mark Wahlberg, Martin Sheen, Matt Damon, Leo DiCaprio, Alec Baldwin. Oh, and Jack Nicholson's name was on there too, but he wasn't working that week. But the biggest all-star of all was Scorsese. I couldn't believe that his name was on a call sheet that was actually in my hand. As soon as I arrived with my little notepad in hand, I found producer Joe Reedy. He gave me the rules and regs. Being a director myself, I assured him that I would be professional, polite, and stay the hell out of everybody's way. He liked that and kindly set me up in a chair right behind Marty's chair behind the monitors. At call time, I kindly introduced myself to some nearby crew members. The set was active and the crew was hard at work. They were so efficient. They were so skilled. It was so cool and and there's so much hustle and bustle going on. But then a calm wave came over the set. It went pin drop quiet. I've never been on a set before that went silent like that while the crew was working. It was surreal. So Martin Scorsese walks on set with his entourage of assistants. You couldn't even hear that pin drop. Because that pin, it was being silent too. Not out of fear, but out of respect. And you know, Marty himself didn't ask for silence or neither did his ADs. It wasn't him, but it was his presence that demanded silence. It was freakishly powerful. I thought that this five foot four man would come on set like gangbusters, barking orders, demanding respect, and everyone subserviently granting every wish. Mind you, I've been on sets like this before. Reedy, get me my wardrobe. Where's my talent? Get my breakfast. Big, bold, throwing ego around like nobody's business. 
But ah, no, that's not how this set is run. I gave Marty a quick handshake and he welcomed me. I sat back, listened, and watched him work for the next 10 hours. When appropriate, I promised myself I would get up the courage to ask Marty a question, just one a day. Again, still challenging myself to get out of that comfort zone. You know, the one we talked about in episode one. I'm always trying to push my limits, always trying to think of the benefit rather than the fear. It would be great to learn something new from the best. So I asked him my one question a day. And I have to tell you, the most important lessons I learned weren't from his words of wisdom, but by the way he led his team of loyal filmmakers. Marty is an authentic leader. An authentic leader is a person of highest integrity, committed to their passion, and how this passion will serve all of those around him. It's clear that Marty has a deep sense of purpose and is true to his core values and passion. No ego, no Italian bravado, he just simply loves what he does. I adored his interaction with his team. He was always motivating his crew to do better, not barking orders, but inspiring them. I heard lots of positive reinforcement all day long. There was one crew member who was misunderstanding a direction that Marty had given him, so he had to do the task over a few times. Marty never raised his voice or showed any kind of frustration. Marty stuck with him, kindly teaching him how to do it right. Marty was absolutely comfortable in his own skin and wasn't afraid to show his vulnerability when he wasn't sure of something. Throughout the day, he would seek reassurance from his DP, his producer, and cast members. He was never afraid to be wrong or to show that he was uncertain. This made him human. It made people feel comfortable around him. No big, fat, ugly ego here. It was clear. He believed in himself, and his crew believed in him. Scorsese is an entertainer, which includes director, producer, writer, actor, spokesperson, etc. But he is also an educator. Did you know that on every film, he calls up his alma mater, NYU, and seeks out an intern to be an assistant on set? He is continually spreading his love for filmmaking. Marty is the true definition of an authentic leader. I think it's an important part of how he got where he is today. It's one of the main qualities that makes him successful. So let's dive deep into what exactly authenticity is. How you can become an authentic leader and get your career on the fast track. But first, let's take a quickity split commercial break. It's time to get in the game and compete. Let KCDStefano.com create a stunning website and engaging video for your growing business so you can monetize, monetize, monetize. Go to KCDStefano.com and click work with us and together we'll have a blast making your dreams marketable. Hey folks, if you've always wanted to start your own podcast, head over to the show notes page that accompanies this episode. There you will find a special link to Entrepreneur on Fire's free podcast course. It's 15 videos in 15 days, and they will have you podcasting like a pro. It's fun, and it's easy, and it is free. I did it myself, and it was fantastic. So go to kcdstefano.com backslash Marty1. you got to check it out. Thank you so much for hanging in. Okay. I think Bill George, faculty at Harvard Business School, wrote it best when describing what an authentic leader is. Here's a power phrase. Authentic leadership is built on character. It's about being true to yourself and reflecting that truth outward. Be as sensitive to others' needs as you are to your own needs. Authentic leaders are flexible and fit the situation and capabilities of their team. At times, authentic leaders are coaches and mentors, inspiring others and empowering their team to lead through the most important tasks without a great deal of supervision. People sense very quickly who's authentic and who is not. Authentic leaders are real and genuine. People sense very quickly who is authentic and who is not. If people see their leaders as trustworthy and willing to learn, followers will respond very positively to requests for help in getting through difficult times. Authentic leaders match their behavior to their context, an essential part of emotional intelligence. They do not burst out with whatever they may be thinking or feeling. Rather, they exhibit self-monitoring, understand how they are being perceived, and communicate effectively. 
Also, authentic leaders are not perfect, nor do they try to be. They make mistakes, but they are willing to admit their errors and learn from them. They know how to ask others for help. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what authenticity is, here are some simple ways in which we can practice being authentic in our everyday lives. I have seven quick tips for you. Here we go. One, catch yourself in the lie. Identify traits, habits, and patterns where you struggle to maintain authenticity. By identifying patterns, you can begin to shift them. Basically, you got to become aware of your own bullshit meter. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Two, throw away your ego and be yourself. You're human. You're not perfect. Nobody is. So act accordingly. People won't admire you if you pump yourself up to look superior. It will only remind them about how small you make them feel. Three, pay attention. Notice people in your office or who work with you. For the employees that are remote, get on Skype instead of a phone call. Connect face to face. When they talk, listen. Don't just wait until they're done talking so that you can say what you want. I know someone like this and it drives me insane. Insane. You have to give people your full attention. Be interested. Pause and reflect on their words. You don't want to interrupt and make them feel unvalued by you hijacking their airspace. Four, always be honest. This is the only way you will gain trust. If you don't know something, explain that you're not the expert. Maybe you can put a spin on it like, hey, let's learn this together. And then on the other hand, if someone hands in substandard work to you, Tell them, but tell them kindly. Try to make them better. Start with the positive aspect of the work or maybe something positive about the person themselves and then tell them what they did wrong and how it could be better. Five, like my mama always said, treat people the way you would like to be treated. Aspire to be called a nice person. Make eye contact. Give a kind and thoughtful smile. Say hello when it's appropriate. Ask people, how the hell are you doing? Always try and help someone with these small gestures. They are more significant than you think. Six, notice how you feel around the powerful. This is a tricky one. When on the other side of the coin, when you are with people who have higher status than you in work or in life, start to notice how you feel. Start to notice if you have a, I'm not as cool feeling. Remind yourself that they are the same as you. Get over it. Get over them. They have the same problems and dysfunctions just like me and you. You don't want the person you're talking to to sense it. Ooh, that's dangerous. If they're real authentic leaders, they will help you. But if they're not, they could really take advantage of you. And I got to tell you, this happened so much to me in the beginning of my career. You have to be careful because maybe they'll give you a lower rate or you'll get bypassed for a promotion at work. You have to start feeling comfortable in your own skin. And remember, we are all the same. Seven, show gratitude. And this is probably the one I enjoy the most. Realize that small things in life are good. Appreciate people for who they are. Try and hold back the complaints and gossip. Use your energy for praise and politeness. Think of what you could do with others with this great attitude. So being authentic can really attract the right kind of people to you. It's like a popularity pill. Pop it in and you will instantly make friends. And being well-liked and having friends can do wonders for your business and lifestyle. Even though Martin Scorsese has always been one of my favorite directors, I didn't necessarily see everything that he's ever created. But now, no matter what, I see absolutely everything that he puts out. Even if it's something that I am not interested. And why? Because I know that he is authentic and he tries to help other people. So in turn, I try to help him. Just think if everyone thought that way about you and your business or product or brand. Being authentic is a life choice and can make you and the people that surround you much happier humans. 
Authenticity has the added benefit that can make your business grow substantially. So think about that for a while. So sisters, please check out next week's podcast, episode number three. I will dive deep into my conversation with legendary Martin Sheen and my favorite actor, Matt Damon. And yes, like I said before, mamas, he is a cute person. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I know life is hard and there is never enough time. So I wanted you to know that I really appreciate the time you have spent with me today. Remember, you can have a successful career and an abundant family life without pulling your hair out. A future chock full of meaning, happiness, and stability. And even more importantly, you have the power to create a role model for your children of strength and stick to Don't ever give up on your dreams. Keep listening and I'll get you there. It's our time now. Skull!